Hi folks. So over the past semester I've had some time to play with our 3D printer and one of the projects that I'm particularly happy with is this little um, 3D printed superhero action figure. Um, it was printed using Autodesk's Tinkerplay application on the tablet and what you do is you go ahead and design it inside Tinkerplay and then you press a button and you can print out the STL or the stereolithography files that then feed into your 3D printer. As you can tell pretty obviously, there are three different flavors of PLA that were used to print out this action figure. There's blue and gold for LaSalle's school colors, and then this particular superhero has some red sort of turbofan jet packs on the back. Um, but one of the problems that um, I've noticed over the past few weeks in working with our 3D printer, and perhaps it's the same with all styles, not just the one that we're using. If I go ahead and put this application up here in the monitor and share it with my face. So here's um, Autodesk Tinkerplay, and this is where I've created this character inside the application. And one of the nifty buttons is this green guy in the, the middle here. And what it does is it takes the three different flavors of PLA that you're going to need and places them on cookie sheets, uh, for lack of a, a better analogy. Um, so there's the gold cookie sheet, there's the red cookie sheet, if I can grab it here, and there is the blue. And that's wonderful. It, it downloads these three separate STL files. And then the 3D printer goes about printing them. Um, but I found um, over the past few prints that when um, the 3D printer is asked to print multiple components at a time, what happens is the 3D print head has to start extruding the PLA polymer, and then it has to stop. It sort of sort of like taking a cake decorate, de decorating tool and squirting out some icing, and then somehow turning the icing off while the printer head moves to the next part turn it back on again and then you keep on repeating that for all the layers of all the parts and this turning on and turning off really doesn't um, result in high quality parts because it's constantly extruding and then turning off the extrusion there's not an actual valve it just stops pushing and then starts pushing again so I found that actually printing the parts out one at a time provides much much better and higher quality parts so the problem that arises, especially using Tinkercad Play, or um, or rather Tinker Play, Tinkercad's the other application we're going to see in a moment, or downloading other STL files from the internet from different um, you know different collections that people have created, um, there I needed or there there needs to be a, a, a simple tool to be able to take an STL file that has a collection of parts and remove you know, all but one part that you want to print. So I, I searched the internet and found a few solutions, and the solution I've settled on happens to f use um, a, a few applications, and I wanted to share it because I thought it was pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to press a button here and um, head on over to uh, Tinkercad. I mentioned um, Tinkerplay was the, the, no, the, um, the, the tablet application, Tinker. Tinkercad is the web application. So what I want to do is I want to create a, uh, a an STL file with multiple components, and then we'll use this solution to remove a component and see if it works. So I'm going to grab a, a red box here and just place it anywhere in the workspace. And then I'm going to grab a second red box and put it anywhere in the workspace. So I'm not creating you know a stacked box. I literally have two individual boxes here. And just to make sure that the the the, um, the file exports properly, I'm going to select both of these guys as soon as I find my keyboard here, and then I'm going to go ahead and press the group button so that they're a, they're a single object, but they're obviously two different objects in the in the single grouping. And if you're familiar with um, with Tinkercad, um, using the right mouse button, you can go ahead and you can sort of move this around and, and change your change your views. Um, I do want to download this as a printable STL file or stereolithography file. So I'm going to go over here to uh, design. I'm going to go ahead and press the button download for 3D printing. And I want to download this STL file. And we'll see if this works. And it's going to go ahead and download this into my browser. And it's downloaded into my browser download. So what I can do now is sort of cancel this back out and head over to um, Cura. Uh, the application, the desktop application I used to, uh, to use to talk to our uh, printer bot, Simple Metal, is what I happen to use. I'm going to go ahead and import this STL file. There it is. It's already in my downloads folder. I've called it separating STL parts. 
.stl so I can get, you know, get a hold of it. I'm going to press open. There they are. So you can, and again, the right mouse button is what allows you to change your view. So I'm all ready to print this. Uh, these are just two blocks, and depending on the different sizes, it's going to take uh, 57 minutes to print this out. And again, the, the, the 3D printer won't have a problem handling this, but it will have to start printing this box and then on that first layer, stop extruding, move the head over to the other layer and then continue to do that as it prints the whole way from the bottom to the top. And um, I, I've, I have found it's much easier just to print one of these blocks at a time so that the, um, the extruder can go ahead and extrude plastic or extrude polymer without turning it off and turning it back on. So the, the problem exists that we need to edit this STL file and remove one of these boxes and then see if we can print that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this by using the left mouse button. I'm going to hit delete and now they're gone. And I'm going to switch over to um, the, the application I'm going to use as soon as I press the button over here. Um, I went over to Blender, uh, blender.org, and downloaded the free Blender application. It's free, you don't need to pay anything. I installed it on my Windows machine. And I have Blender running, so I went ahead and installed it, and I have it running, so I'm gonna click over to Blender. Here's Blender. There's a heck of a lot of controls. It's a very, very advanced uh, program. I do not know how to use Blender. After installing it, um, I went ahead and read some of the tutorials and some of the uh, the ideas of how you'd go about uh, editing these files. So that's about that's about all I know how to use in Blender. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to go ahead and load our STL file in Blender. Go over here to File, and I'm going to. Um, down here under import and export, rat, I, I did say load, my fault. I'm going to use import rather than just open. And one of the things that we can import from this latest version of, uh, of Blender is an STL file. So I'm going to go ahead and press that. Um, it's, it, it's going ahead and looked, looking in my documents folder. I'm going to navigate up and go to my download folder where I know that, that is. There she is, the STL file. And I'm going to go over here and say import STL. And I believe it's here, but it's really, really large. So I'm going to go ahead and use the scroll wheel on my mouse to sort of back out. And there they are. So that was the viewing pane down here. Here's these guys. And much like in um, Tinkercad, where you can move the view around um, inside Blender, at least in this particular default version, if you press and hold the scroll wheel, then you can move your view. So pressing and holding the scroll wheel inside Blender is very similar to pressing and holding the right mouse button inside uh, Tinkercad. So there's, there's our boxes. They're definitely, both of them are here. And we want to go ahead and be able to, um, to select one of these boxes and, and get rid of them. The difficulty is that these boxes are not individual objects. These boxes inside the stereolithography file or the STL file, they're actually a giant collection of triangles. They're actually a giant collection of vertices, these corners edges of individual triangles and there's a there's a hidden edge in the middle here and faces where these large complex polygons happen to be drawn in 3d space these cubes are not very complex but whatever you happen to create in 3d is represented by a whole series of polygons inside this program so what i want to do is come over here to the other side i need to get my goofy face out of the way and over here i want to scroll down and uh, scroll out here and notice that my the name of my parts down here separating parts there's a button right next to here to look at the individual um, um, components and as soon as I, I toggle that on and off you'll notice that now I'm looking at the individual polygons that comprise these blocks again these are very simple blocks so the polygons are not very complex and now the goal is to select these polygons, group them together, and then be able to, to delete them. So I'm going to use some of the tools down here along the bottom. Um, some, one of the tools I'm going to use, as you'll notice, it, it's very, very small on this screen, but there, if I let my mouse hover over, it says view uh, vertex select, a vertice is these corners. Right next to it, grayed out, is an edge select, so any of these long lines are edges and then this third one here is face select so it's much easier to grab a face so i'm going to go ahead and press the face select 
And then I also want to make sure that this next button right next to it, it says limit selection to visible. If I, cr if I click this, you'll notice that I'm now sort of seeing through these cubes and they look sort of transparent. If I make sure that that is clicked, then I can't see the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and use the scroll wheel again and sort of zoom around. I'm only looking at the outside version of this. And again, not to get too goofy, but if I click on it, you'll notice I can see inside the box that on very, very complex um, STL files that gets really complex and very difficult to see where you need to select. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on or off so we can only see the outside. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and select just these individual values. So I'm going to select one of these guys and I believe that we select inside Blender um, using the right mouse button to click on any one of these circles. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this circle right here. You'll notice I've selected this face now what I want to do is I've only selected one face. If I click on any one of these doc dots, I can pick any single face, but I need to select all of them so that I can treat it as a single object and then delete the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and select this face that's facing us. And then down here under select, very conveniently, there happens to be um, one option that says linked. So it's pretty obvious that all of these polygons on this cube are linked together because they're touching. So I'm going to press select over here. I'm going to go ahead and say linked. There's also a shortcut here called control L. Um, it probably makes pretty much sense that selecting individual separate objects or linked polygons is a pretty popular thing to do. So I can use control L. I'm going to use the, the, the left mouse button to select this. And now the entire cube is selected. That's pretty cool. That was pretty nifty. And now the magic delete button on my keyboard. I'm just going to press delete and it'll say what do you want to delete i want to delete um the faces i want to delete all the faces and including their the faces make up the edges and the vertices i'll go ahead and use my left mouse button to click that and our box is gone fantastic um i can play with this file um, now that the box is gone but all i really want to do is is export it and go ahead and print out this single value over here so i'm going to go ahead up to here to file i'm going to go down here to export I'm going to export, um, well, I lost my, my menu here. Let me grab this guy, um, click on file, go to export. Um, down here, I can export an STL. Um, press this button. I'm in documents again. I want to go up to my downloads. As soon as I find it, there she is. Separating parts. Um, let's go ahead and give it a title. Um, I'll just call it single box. And I believe I have .stl still going. I'm going to press export STL. I'm assuming it's already happened. So now I can switch back over to my Cura file. Here's my Cura. And I'm um, just going to put my face back on here. Why? Uh, much easier to see me talk. Um, here we go. We're back. I'm going to go ahead and, um, and load this up. And uh, there's our single box that we just created. Press the single box and open it, and there's our single box. And if I right mouse click and hold and scroll, I now have a single box to print rather than printing two boxes. So again, depending on which application has generated this um, this multiple object or multiple component um, STL file um, doesn't really matter as long as it's a compatible STL file or a compliant STL file. You can use Blender and use this method to pretty quickly um, select those objects that you want to get rid of, press the old delete button, and then um, be able to print out the part that you need. So with that, um, happy printing.